G'day folks, it's Rob here. Uh, today's clip, I'm just going to run through uh, why I decided to pull down my aquaponic system as there appears to be a little bit of confusion online as to what's going on. Uh, now, we've had this uh, aquaponic system up and running in various forms for about eight or nine years and yeah, basically got to the point where uh, due to the house renovations and also wanting to um, rework the backyard, uh, I decided that it was time to pull this aquaponic system down. Now, it worked great for us. I had someone say, well, you must have done something wrong if you're pulling it down. No, not at all. Um, there were a few mishaps along the way. Uh, bits of pipe work fell off due to uh, not being installed properly. I had uh, nitrite spikes and issues due to constant flow beds becoming uh, fantastic solids filters. But on the whole, this system grew us some fantastic veg. Not only that, some terrific jade and silver perch as well. There was a lot of tweaks and changes that I would have made to hopefully make it run more efficiently, which is part of the reason why it's been pulled down. But other than that, I was more than happy with the way this system ran for us. Now, just to give you a bit of a gander at how the system came down, it was pretty basic. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, as I've had time, I've been cleaning out the media from the grow beds. I decided to clean all the muck and gunk, or as much as I could, roots included, out of the media that was in the grow beds, so it could be stored for use later. Um, if I'd stored it wet, it would have gone slightly anaerobic and manky. So yeah, I, I figured the best thing to do was to clean as much mess out of there as I could. And it's just stored in a couple of cages lined with um, shade cloth at the moment. And when we get a couple of uh, dry weeks, uh, I'll be laying it all out on shade cloth or trays or whatever, just to make sure it's nice and toasty dry. And then it will be packed uh, in containers for use later. Or I might even try and sell a little bit to uh, recoup some of the costs and uh, the money that has gone into the build of the system originally. So on Friday I finished cleaning out the last of the grow beds with the large cardamom in it and yesterday I decided it was time to pull the plug on the rest of the system and yeah the first thing I had to do was pretty much we'll remove the pump from the sump tank and try and get the gudgeons out and set them up in a little tank under the house until we have another pond set up ready for them. And now to begin with I thought I'd be a little bit um, sneaky and try and make a couple of very basic fish traps, just things I've seen online using a, a 1.5 litre water bottle. Uh, unfortunately the fish were a lot smarter uh, than I thought and they decided not to fall for the trick. Uh, they ate all the, uh, the burly bread bits that I put down in front of the openings but they didn't venture into the little traps themselves. So I decided just to pull them out with the net. Um, the reason I didn't really want to use Use the net is a couple of them were a little bit too small and they could have fallen through the holes but yeah luckily they all came out um, re relatively easily. So those gudgeons were moved up into a small little fish tank underneath the house. Uh, Bianca had to buy a new sponge filter because I couldn't find one and while she was down there she also bought them a little bit of our tank furniture and yeah, those little fellas, I'll live in there until we end up setting up another pond down the line. Now, once uh, the uh, water was out of the system, um, I had to clean out the biofilter. Uh, the biofilter was a moving bed bioreactor. It was stocked with the, it's called a PEO3 or basically a K2 five spoke uh, biomedia. So all that had to come out and it's gone into a container and at a later date it'll get the same treatment as the clay, maybe not in direct sunlight because I don't think it's UV stabilized but I'll set it out on some um, shade cloth underneath our back deck and just let it dry out and it will be stored away in canisters for later use as well. So after the biofilter was cleaned from the biomedia, I let the water flow via gravity down into the sump tank and also emptied the drum that was acting as a sort of a settling filter next to it. Um, I let the water from it drain into the sump tank as well. And from there, I pumped all the water up into uh, the pond. I basically stuck a couple of bulkheads in there, sealed it off again, attached a drainage hose, and just, yeah, um, topped it up with all the water that was remaining in the filters in the sump tank. And the water from that will just be used to uh, water the root pouch wicking trays and um, a few of the wicking barrels around the place um, over the next couple of weeks, as I don't think there'll quite be enough rain to keep them all well hydrated. Then it was just a matter of, um, you know, pulling the barrels apart, it was, which was a bit of fun because they were joined by 90 mil or roughly three inch pipe uh, with uni seals in each chamber. Um, so that was a bit of fun trying to wiggle them apart. Actually got a bit of a surprise uh, after I moved the radial flow filter out. I noticed a little bit of a flapping on the ground and apparently there was a gudgeon living in the radial flow filter itself. So I rescued that little fella, uh, ran him up to the house and added him into the tank with his buddies. 
and then all that was left was um, to, uh, yeah, bail out the rest of the water in the base of the sump tank and remove it from this area down here, which has left me with this great big hole that I now need to fill in with some dirt. And then what I'm going to do is uh, just rake some of this rock over the top of it. And then we're going to collect all the uh, pavers that we've used as bits of path around the yard down there. And there's still some in amongst the wicking beds or the old where the wicking beds were. There's also fallen mangoes from the fruit bats still to pick up. Um, but yeah, uh, all those pavers are going to um, be put on top of the rock here. And then on top of that, we'll be putting all the other bits of infrastructure we have left around the place. Um, we've got some uh, school fencing and some trellises, some bits of tin, um, an old uh, workbench and an old barbecue my dad made, some watering ta water tanks and bits and pieces like that. All that will be pulled out of down there and stored under this area here. Uh, so we have a clear run at landscaping the backyard, putting in some small retaining walls. And then, yeah, um, this area here will end up with a proper cover over it and a larger aquaponic system go in here. And you'll start to see garden beds and a chicken shed and some plants being popped out in the backyard. But, you know, don't hold your breath, folks. I mean, it could be another 12 months before we get the place up to where we want it. Um, I can't move as much as I used to. And there's also a few financial costs that we've got to take into consideration as well. But getting back to the aquaponics. Now, you folks who have been keeping up with updates on YouTube and Facebook will know that I've already started to build the new temporary aquaponic system up here underneath the deck. So what we've got already is a 400 litre grow bed on a stand that I bought from Danny. Thank you very much, mate. Still haven't caught up with your latest video. I will, I will, I swear. Uh, also to um, a fish tank, which was from the other system. And this is the cage that was around the sump tank down the back there that I pulled out yesterday. And you can see the anodized tin that I had around the side just to stop any rock from collapsing the base of the sump tank itself. Now the tray's got a little bit of rust on it down the bottom there, but I don't think it's structural. I gave it the uh, screwdriver tap test yesterday. So what I'm gonna do is just hit that with a wire brush or maybe the wire wheel on the grinder and then just hit it with some cold gal. And yeah, this will basically be the stand for a grow bed and also act as the sump as well. I do have one concern. I'm not too sure uh, whether I might have to raise this whole grow bed a little bit because as you can see, we have a drain just up in there and what I need to do is to run PVC pipe down from there and then down into the, um, uh, the, the sump tank, sorry. And I have a feeling from memory it actually sits a little bit proud of that. So it might be a very tight squeeze trying to get um, the drain to come down at a decent angle. Worst case scenario, we'll just need to get a couple of jacks out here, raise this up and um, either put um, some more sleeper down because I think I do have a, a length of sleeper we could use just to raise it up a bit or maybe even just a couple of our paver thicknesses high should do the trick and give us more than enough clearance into the sump itself. Then over the top of the sump, we are going to have a single grow bed. I was chatting to Matthias, mucking around or playing around with the idea of adding a sand bed in here. Um, but yeah, I don't think I will this time around. I'll wait until we have a, a dedicated aquaponic space down the back there and maybe a bit out there. We'll just wait and see. Um, but yeah, I'll, when I get a dedicated aquaponic space, then I'll worry about um, yeah, playing around with a dedicated sand system. For now, I'll just go back to another media bed here and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. This is how much rain we've had. Seeds that have been left in the media have decided to sprout. So I actually have a feeling they could be um, Warrigal green seeds. I'll have a dig around and have a look, hey? Yes, it is. It's a Warrigal green seedling. So there you go. Actually, I'll, I'll leave him in there. Might actually take pity on them and water them because I really do love Warrigal greens. Just a quick point on um, keeping everybody updated. I've had a few people complain um, that they're not seeing posts that um, only members of Farm Your Own Yard and the YouTube membership platform are seeing. I'm very sorry, folks, but um, it's one of those things. I would feel like a scumbag if I um, took money from people and offered them nothing in return. I mean, it'd be a pretty low act. So I do tend to post um, small update videos there at least every second day and photo updates and things I'm doing around the patch but you're not missing out. Believe me, you're not missing out. You can ask anyone who's a member and please comment below if you are a member. Um, you know, 
everything I do for the members is just small sni snippets that I then um, either add some more footage in or take some out later or um, shoot a whole new unique clip just for Facebook. Um, sorry, not Facebook, YouTube. Um, so you guys do not miss out on anything. I haven't posted any educational stuff to um, just the members sites only. All those clips have come up here to YouTube. I share them freely. Um, I'm am in the process of doing an introduction to aquaponics book, a PDF book that I may charge for in the future. I don't know. It may just end up being a perk for members who want to go above and beyond and um, support us over on our Farm Your Own Yard page. But you know, it's just one of those things. You're not missing out on the free content that I post here to YouTube. So I'll stop rabbiting on about that now, folks. And um, yeah, I do hope you guys who are, are interested in what's going on here with the old aquaponics system and now the new one that's taking shape um, did enjoy the clip. And yeah, I do really need to thank those folks who do go above and beyond and come back here every week and um, watch the clips no matter what I post and leave a comment and say good day. I really do appreciate the support, folks. It's been a fantastic 10 or so years here on YouTube and I really do enjoy making these clips and uploading them for you all to enjoy. Uh, and also too, thank you to you support on those different sites bit of a uh, Bevan driving past um, thank you for all the support on the um, the sites the farm your own yard and the YouTube membership platform I really do appreciate um, you know the friendships I've made with a lot of you folks over there hung out with a couple of you this morning on the monthly zoom hangout um, also too please check out our super contributors links are, as always are down in the description below and I'm gonna stop rabbiting on I do hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a catch-up as I said before and I'll catch you later cheers all